tell me. I hear you. Is it you? Is it you? Hey. I hear you. It is one to have knowledge of, yet another to trust and love. Two in the Father's hands. One to bend and sway, to take shape. Some addition, some subtraction. To melt, to mold, into the Father's hand. One to dry and crack and crumble through. Every piece through his fingers. The dust shining briefly from his light, then settling into the darkness. Are you the one to mold into the Father's hands? Or the one that becomes a little brittle and at any change in life you feel like you're cracking and falling through his hands? Hello, this is Freedom One and today I want to talk about pliability on this episode of Hearing God. Ever get a word through a brother or sister in the Lord or the Lord tell you something directly but somehow things or choices just don't pan out perfectly. So you find yourself hanging on to the word, but has God moved on? You see this in old moves of the church. People are going through the motions, but God has moved on. Instead of people catching the new wave, they judge what is new and suppress it. The same thing happens in your own life. You can never allow your perception to box a word from God in. Uh, you, you just can't expect a breakthrough to come by the basket of your perception that you put all your eggs into. <laughs> you have to be pliable. You have to be pliable because we are in war. Uh, in one moment, the sergeant says, go here, but there's enemy fire, so you have to fall back and follow the creek bed instead. Do you end up at the same target place? Eventually, yes, but if you aren't pliable, you won't seek that forward advancement at all. You'll sit there all day and wait for the enemy fire to stop. But what you've spiritually encountered is a weapon that's been formed and prospers, and that's no pun intended. <laughs> um, so, examples. My son plays an online game. So he's downstairs on a computer, and I'm upstairs, and through the air vent, I can hear him crying. <laughs> his younger brother comes up the stairs um, saying that he didn't get his way in the game. And I know just what happened, because in the game, to go to a new level and conquer new territory, you have to diligently wait alongside of other players outside of this elevator door. So you could wait up to 15 minutes for your chance to jump on this elevator, and it only holds four players. So you constantly have to be diligent, not knowing when it will open. You have to constantly move into position. You know, they're forever hitting the button to make it jump ahead. So every time you do that, it, it pushes the other one behind. So is it me or man does this sound so spiritual <laughs> so yeah uh, he was crying because he missed his chance and it hurt but then the next day he told me he made it uh, he kept persevering and moving into position despite the past hurt and the blockade you know you can learn a lot from a child <laughs> the Lord shows me a lot uh, fusing my love and desire for the best for my child and that they mirror how he loves each one of us through those experiences. So pliability people, are you frustrated? Are you doing the last thing you knew to do, but it's going nowhere? Do you feel like you have more and more on your plate? Perhaps it's not that it's just actually more on your plate, but that God's been trying to show you to shift to the new path to avoid the enemy's fire. Will you sound schizophrenic to people, saying one thing this day and switching it up and doing this other thing the next? Yes, you might, uh, but what is more important, the approval of man or flowing in the Spirit of God? Would you put your firstborn on an altar of sacrifice? Would you trust him that much? You have to be completely led by the Spirit in this hour. How many of you allow things to take precedence in your life that preserve what others think about you? 
you're so afraid of this scripture. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, and so on and so on. You know, you realize that every little event will be organized to keep you from hitting your targets, and it's never going to stop. It, you know, really what happens in that instance is it becomes a weapon to prosper, hasn't it? So what is going to cause the rocks to throw that uncomfortable thing you don't want? That division among close friends and family. Uh, recall the parable of the sower regarding the seed sown in the stony ground. You have to decide what, that what God asks of you is more important than any function man can contrive. You know, you have to remember who's reigning in the atmosphere in your territory. Until you gain spiritual dominion, someone else can influence everything to line up so you'll always miss the mark unless you esteem God's best above pleasing man or avoiding, as the parable says, affliction or persecution. That's, Jesus said, we're going to get that. You have to realize that sometimes this affliction and persecution he's talking about is choosing God's best over the opinions of others and that that is a hard thing because those people are close to you and dear to you and that's where you you really feel that pain that Christ has when uh, you're rejected by those you care about because you have to you have to choose the right way uh, for everyone so if you esteem these little distractions to be more important than the revelation that is to stand in the gap on behalf of these that you love, uh, then what is it? You know, if it, standing in the gap on behalf of them and everybody else, it's not just helping them out, it's helping everybody out. So if, if you're not standing in the gap above a function, an event, or some man-pleasing thing, then it's it kind of shows that their good opinion about you is what you love or that you don't really love them up at all so that sounds harsh but you really have to break it down the motive so you know think of Jesus what he did he, people had no idea what he did in the spiritual realm and people today still don't get it you know how nuts it must have seemed to his disciples to just hand himself over you know he didn't do it for a little boat. He did it for the whole ocean. So I'm not saying abandon friends and family and go work in a secular food kitchen, <laughs> although a trip there might enlarge your heart. I'm saying when choice A is stand in the gap, the gap on behalf of the entire city and choice B is to do something to keep peace or to preserve well-wishers, then A is the ocean and B equals a boat. Yeah, a boat holds a very little, but um, because that is the heart for every soul for the ocean, um, the ocean is boundless. The ocean is also where the anointing increases. It's, it's not increasing in the boat, in that safe place. Yeah, are you, are you thinking about the walking on the water thing? That's kind of what it is. He's saying, get out of the boat. I'm hearing that right now. <laughs> so I've got a little story I heard that also illustrates this point. And maybe you've heard of it before. Um, a man was having a conversation with the Lord one day and said, Lord, I'd like to know what heaven and hell are like. So the Lord led this man to two doors. He opens up the one door and the man looks in. And in the middle of the room is this large table, and there's this pot of food. And the people are sitting around the table, and they look terrible. You know, they're starving. And they're all holding spoons with very long handles that are strapped to their arms. And they found it, you know, impossible to reach in. To, you know, they could reach into the, into the pot, with the spoonful, but because the handle was longer than their arms, they couldn't get the spoon back into their mouths. So, you know, the man's saying, oh my, you know, and, and the Lord said, yes, you know, th this, this is hell. So they went to the next room, opened it up, 
and what do you see? The same picture, only instead of a bunch of sick people, what you have is a bunch of happy and joyful people all sitting around this table, and it's because instead of trying to bring the spoon to their mouths, they could serve the next person across the table, and they were in heaven. <laughs> so, you know, think of that. Um, you know, it's it's one one group has learned to feed each other, and the greedy only think of themselves. So I like that story because it can get you to see that your pliability is tied into your focus. When your focus is so narrow and you just box God in, you'll find that crushing and crumbling feeling. Anytime you think you've got that basket of eggs just how it needs to be, uh, when you get your eyes off the mirror but instead mirror and conform to Jesus's image that's where you can become a work of art in the father's hands it's time to put the blinders back on and care more about what the Holy Spirit says to do than in keeping the peace in your family in your groups in your sphere of influence you have to be pliable just as Abraham was he was willing to give up that promise but the good thing is, is that promise will not leave you. So hold on to that precious word. It's just that it might not turn out how your mind perceives it should. Think of those people sitting around the table. It was all a matter of perception, what their focus was. You had the inwardly focused people, then you had the outwardly focused people. So uh, don't box God in, just be pliable. <laughs>